welcome to the last UI kit presentation about the Flutter UI kit. We're going to end this one with a bang because it's Flutter. It's my favorite framework language out there. Uh, let's get into it. So a little bit about myself and why I'm capable of presenting the Flutter UI kit to you. So I'm a developer evangelist at Agora. Uh, I actually worked on this Flutter UI kit with my colleague Mahir. He might have seen his presentation a little bit earlier about Android. I'm also a Google developer expert for Flutter and Dart. I've been working with Flutter for the past three years since before it came out even on beta. And uh, recently, a couple months ago, I got the Google developer expert little tag next to me. I'm also a content creator. So I make videos on YouTube and on Twitter. Uh, so you can learn about more Flutter and UI kit stuff on there if you want. But let's get into the actual UI kit. So this is what we're going to build first. UI kit makes it really simple to put video calls into your application. Um, you can create something like this with only three lines of code. And I actually have a video prepared for you to show off this little three lines of code in a from the very beginning, from scratch, from like creating the Flutter project all the way to pushing it out and making it work. So let me select this and share. It just provides a simple way to add video call or live streaming features to either an existing app or a new app that you're creating. Right now, we're going to show you how to go from the very basis of just creating your Flutter project to adding the dependencies of the Agora UI kit and everything you need to know about creating a video call app using the Agora UI kit package. So let me show you how it's done. So first, let's search on the pub.dev for the Agora UI kit package. You can find it right here. So before we move forward, let's actually create our Flutter project. We're going to do that using Flutter Create. And we're going to just call it demo application. It'll create that project for us. Then we can go into it and open it in VS Code. So the very first thing we're going to need to do is add our dependency of Agora UI kit. I have this handy VS Code extension that lets you add dependencies pretty easily. So you can search at Agora UI kit, or you can just do it the old fashioned way, copy paste into here, and then click save and let the pub spec YAML retrieve that file. If you go back to the Agora UI kit documentation, we'll see that there's some prerequisites that we need. We need to enable microphone and camera on both devices. So for Android, I think as long as you're debugging, we don't need to add this, but if you're adding it for release or you see something's not working with the permissions on Android, make sure to add these. But for our demonstration, we're gonna be using an emulator and you don't really need this, but we will need to add the iOS permissions for this. Now there's a couple ways to do it. You can do it through Xcode where you go in and add those through the Xcode editor or you can just go into iOS, runner, info.plist, and paste these lines. NS microphone usage description, NS camera usage description. And then if you save that, you should have the capabilities of using the camera and microphone for iOS now. So everything's set up and we're ready to add our Flutter UI kit in here. Just to clean this up a little bit, we're gonna remove all the comments here from the basic Flutter app that you get and come down here remove all this extra stuff that we don't really need. Okay, so in the body of our scaffold, we're gonna to need to add an Agora video viewer. Well, you'll notice you need to pass in a client. So let's create our Agora client for this. And we're gonna need two fields, Agora connection data and enabled permissions. The permissions are pretty simple. We need the camera permission and we need the microphone permission. Then for the Agora connection data, we're gonna pass an object called Agora connection data. And in here, we're gonna need two things. We're gonna need the app ID, and we're gonna need the channel name. For now, the channel name will be test. To retrieve the app ID, you need to go to the Agora console, go to the specific project you need, and then you have your app ID right here. I'm not going to show it to you so you don't use my application that I created, but copy this and put it into your own code. Now what I just did is I just put it into a separate file so you don't see the actual app ID within the video, but we can import that file right here and then use the variable name. And then finally, we could pass that client into our Agora video viewer. And there we go. That's all you need to create a video call within your application, but we're gonna go a little one step further. We're gonna wrap this widget in a stack because you don't really have a complete video call without some buttons. And we can add Agora video buttons here. This one will also need a client. Let's pass the same client. And there we go. Now we have 
an application with our video viewer and then stacked on top of it we have some buttons to control that video call we can launch it now so there we go we have our little emulated camera popping up with this this cute little guy jumping around and there i am joining from my second device which is an ios device and we have a full video call here and there we go that's the basis of the gore ui kit and if you think it's cool and you enjoy it make sure to give it a like on pub.dev all right so that was the basics of a gore ui kit let me get back to sharing my screen so with that we were able to create an app that looks looks like this and you saw there was only three lines of code needed there there was the agora client where you define it agora video viewer and the agora buttons so if you have those three defined you have you see this exact thing um you, you'll see this little character with the the green and pink nose throughout the presentation that's the android emulator camera that kind of gives a little um it's like a little fake 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 person so there's a lot more you can do with that with the agora ui kit so you can customize the layout you can customize the buttons and you can customize the configuration we're going to go through basically everything that you can customize with the agora ui kit how to do it what is going to change and how it's going to look like so the first thing we're going to cover is the layout customizations actually before we get into that check the chat it says you can leave some questions in the questions tab we're going to go over those at the end and uh, if you have any questions i'll be happy to answer those so layout customizations we have a couple different ways you can customize the agora ui kit layout so we have two types of layouts we have either a grid or floating layout uh, and we can customize this floating layout in many different ways we also have a disabled widget that basically when you turn your camera off you'll have a default agora view uh, and you can change that to be whatever you want then we have audio and video states and a counter for the number of users so this is what the floating view looks like you saw the first one we created the basic flutter app it was just uh, in the grid view so there was someone above and someone below using the floating layout you can make have like a main person at the front and you can pin that person using the little little pin button here you can make them in the main view and then you have a scrollable view of all the other users in there so with the grid it probably only makes sense up to like eight people but if you want to go a little bit more than that you'll probably need to use a floating layout but like i said you can customize that floating layout so if you look at this before image uh there's some spacing on the side here of the main view there's some spacing over here the perfect squares and then we can make that have no spacing no padding at the ends we can make the videos a little bit wider at the top you can do whatever you can customize this however you want and i think oh, i clicked the wrong one all right so then lastly not lastly second to lastly you can have a di disabled widget you can update that to however you want it to look like so like I said, the default one is with the Gore logo in the middle. So if you turn off your camera, you'll see that, but you can change it to any widget that you want. I don't know if my choice of widget was the best one. I don't know if red with some black text is what you would want within your app, but you have the freedom to do all that. And then finally, the last, last way you can change up the UI is by adding, adding AV states and the number of users. So AV state stands for audio video. Um, and normally within a video call, if you don't have those enabled, you won't be able to tell if someone has their mic muted or their video turned off or something or well, video turned off. You'll probably be able to tell because you don't see their video, but if you want that extra little state in there is there for you as well. Uh, so just set a flag to true and you should see both of those states. And now you can tell your friends to unmute themselves when they forget. And then also the number of users with a two people call doesn't really make sense, but if you have more and more users jumping in then that might make a little bit more sense so that was just layout customizations but there's a lot of button customizations you could also do so we could remove buttons you could reorder buttons you could change what button which buttons are available you could add some new buttons change the alignment change the paddings and auto hide all them so this is what you would have to do in order to remove or reorder those buttons we have an enumeration for called built-in buttons that defines all the ones we already have in there 
So by default, you have four buttons in there. You have the mute, end call, switch camera, and turn off camera. But you can reorder those, remove them, just like we did in the right side. So we have the call end as the first button and then the toggle mic. You notice the toggle mic before was before the end call button, but now we set it to after using this enumeration. So we removed two of them and reordered the way they were set up as well. Uh, lastly, we can customize the buttons. We have um, in this in this section, we had an end call button with a nice icon, nice circular layout. And if you want to make it boxy, not fit the other style of the buttons, you have the freedom to do that. Uh, like I said, probably not the best solution that I put here, but the the power of it is the freedom. And you do that using the pick whichever button you want to replace and just change the widget in there. So in this in this case, it was a disconnect button widget, and they have all those for all the default buttons. But if the default buttons aren't good enough for you, you have additional buttons you could add. So there's a field called extra buttons. And in there, you just basically add in whatever widgets you want. So before we had those four buttons, and then we added two more extra buttons that don't really do anything in this case. But if you wanted it to do something, you have that freedom. That's what a GoI iKit is all about, letting you customize however you want it to look and making it easy to have a simple one in the same time. You can also align the buttons. For example, if you have a cute little dog that you want to not disrupt the view from, you can change the buttons to go to the very top. Uh, so you do that by changing the button alignment property, making it top center. In this case, there's different other ways to align those buttons. Uh, feel free to do it however you want. We can also change the button padding. Normally, you have it floating a little bit above, but if you want it to be more, mostly out of the view or something like that, you can change it to a padding of zero so that it's right against the bottom. I think the first one looks nicer, but you have the freedom. And then the last customization is the auto hide buttons. So if you have, so you can just implement the auto hide buttons flag, set that to true if you want, and that will automatically hide it for you every five seconds or after five seconds. And then you can tap on the screen and it will bring those buttons back up. But you can also change the interval, how long it takes to hide those buttons. In this case, we changed to 10. So after 10 seconds, they will disappear. So we covered video button, the video layout differences, the button layout differences that you can customize. Uh, but lastly, there's the actual configuration of the call. So that was just how everything looks, but now you can change how everything behaves behind the scenes. So this looks like a bunch of code, but don't worry about this. We don't, we're not going to need to dive deep into all of this. Uh, so this is when you're declaring the actual Agora client. There's four parameters that you're going to want to cover. There's the Agora connection data, the enable permissions, the event handlers, and the Agora channel data. So we're going to cover the connection data and the channel data a little deeper in the previous ones. But the two ones I wanted to go through here is the enable permissions and the event handlers. So the event handlers, we put that access out to everybody because if someone wants to do something very custom with the Agora UI kit, maybe they want one of those extra buttons to have an extra feature that they need a special permission for, they can pass all that in and still make their uh, client very clean. But by default, we need access to the camera and we need access to the microphone in order to have any type of video call. If you don't have those, your video call is not going to be too great. Uh, and then the second thing that we allow them to do from here is add some event handlers. So by default, within the UI kit, we have some actions happening whenever certain events happen. So the event handler, whenever you call the Agora SDK, something happens on your phone side. For example, someone leaves, you get a little callback that says a user left. Or if someone joins the channel, you get a callback execute that someone joined the channel. And you can do specific things there. Within the Agora UI kit, we customize a layout based on how many people are joined, do different things like that. But if you want to add some extra actions, for example, in this one, you want to print a statement saying, do something extra, you have that freedom. And you can, you have all the creativity that you want available to you with these callbacks. And then we have the Agora connection data. So this is all the information you need to actually 
connect to your call. Um, it's very similar to the actual Agora SDK, like the official Agora RTC engine package. You should have all the things that you have on there available in the UI kit as well. So you're going to need to pass an app ID. Like you saw in the video, you get that from the Agora console. Uh, you need to pass in a channel name. Uh, you have the option of a UID. So if you want to be able to tell apart different users from a database or something like that, you have that capability. You can add a token URL. So if you have a ter- token server deployed, uh, this will generate new tokens for you when they're about to expire. You just have to add in the URL there. Then you can add a temporary token if you're just testing out and an area code if you want to have a specific area to target. And then lastly, we have the Agora channel data. And it looks like I forgot to lowercase the, the L. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, so this was for the customization of the actual call. So if you want to change how things behave within the call, and you, again, have all the access to what you would have from the original Agora RTC package. Um, things like, is active speaker disabled? Set camera torch on, which is the flash, by the way. Uh, set beauty effect options. Channel profile and client role are just some of the examples of how you can customize your actual call to behave. There's a lot more. I just didn't want to list them all in one slide. And that's that's pretty much all there is to the Agora UI kit. That's how you can customize it using these customizations. You can go through, change it up to look however you want. And uh, yeah, it's pretty great. And if you want to check it out some more, we have a GitHub called Flutter UI Kit, an Agora community. There will be a link in the next PowerPoint slide that will show you a QR code. So in this one, you can come here if you want to contribute. We already have some people that are adding issues. We have some people that have added some pull requests, and it's it's great to have the whole community join in on this. And also, if you want to go to the Agora UI Kit package here, give it a like. Uh, that would be great. And you can access the GitHub from here and read some more about it here as well. So that's it. If you have any questions, leave it in the questions. Here's a link to my YouTube, my Twitter, if you want to join those, then the pub.dev for the Agora UI kit and the GitHub. That's it. All right. If you have any questions, leave them in the tab. Um, and let's get to them. So Robert said, awesome. Does this work with Flutter Web and Desktop? We actually have a branch that is being worked on currently called Web. So this isn't released yet. It's not officially in the uh, Agora UI kit package. But if you want to take a look, you want to test it out, this one should be be working, or for the most part. You can help contribute and make it even better if you want to be part of that. Does it work with null safety? Yes, this package is null safe. Uh, I think you can even see on pub.dev, we have a little null safety checker here. So it should work with Flutter too well um, and should be all good. Is there an ETA on web support and screen sharing for Flutter web? So I don't think there's an ETA, but like I said, we're working on it. If you really need it, you can jump into that branch, try it out, test it out, potentially contribute if you want. And uh, it should be there soon. Screen sharing support for Flutter Web, that one's a question mark, I think. Uh, Hopefully, it'll be coming. It's on the the plans, but I can't really give a date for when those those will be available. Are those features available in RTM and voice call? I'm not too sure what features. If you're talking about the Agora UI kit features, those are not available in RTM and voice call. Well, a lot of the features that I discussed in the um, UI kit, you can do those using the basic package and you can do all those things. But the the, the nice thing about UI kit is it puts all those things together in a simple to use um, low code solution. And RTM is just um, signaling, like a way to signal and get messages across each other. So it doesn't really have the whole video feature. But we're going to put be putting in RTM into the Agora UI kit to have even more 
customability and even cooler things that the UI kit can do. What's the use of tokens? So the tokens, basically, it uh, helps you control who's in the call and base, you can like set a token to expire after some time so that uh, people get kicked out or basically gives the person more control about who, who's in the call and more security within that call. Amit said, will there be virtual background support? I'll write that down. I hope so. I think that would be pretty cool. And then where's the log for troubleshooting? Is it the same as Agora RTC SDK log location within your phone? I assume it's working with Android Studio Debugger as well. I believe it should be the same way as Agora RTC uh, package. But you might have to reach out to me and I'll double check that for you later. All right. Seems like that was all the questions. And uh, thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, definitely take a look at the Agora UI kit. Um, if you want to contribute to GitHub or help us out in any way, feel free. We definitely appreciate it. And thanks for watching in and tuning into my session. <laughs>